This is a article in Nature from June 2012, uh, and it's about this biologist, Kevin Peterson, and it's titled Phylogeny, Rewriting Evolution. Quote, a molecular paleobiologist at nearby Dartmouth College, Peterson has been reshaping phylogenetic trees for the past few years, ever since he pioneered a technique that uses short molecules called microRNAs to work out evolutionary branchings. He has now sketched out a radically different diagram for mammals, one that aligns humans more closely with elephants than with rodents. Quote, I've looked at thousands of microRNA genes, and I can't find a single example that would support the traditional tree, he says. The technique just changes everything about our understanding of mammal evolution. But a chance investigation of microRNAs in microscopic creatures called rotifers led him to examine these regulatory molecules in everything from insects to sea urchins. And as he continues to look, he keeps uncovering problems from the base of the animal tree all the way up to its crown. When Peterson started his work on the placental phylogeny, he had originally intended to validate the traditional mammal tree, not chop it down. As he was experimenting with his growing microRNA library, he applied it to mammals because their tree was so well established that they seemed an ideal test. Alas, the data didn't cooperate. If the traditional tree was correct, then an unprecedented number of microRNA genes would have would have to have been lost, and Peterson considers that highly unlikely. The microRNAs are totally unambiguous, he says, but they give a totally different tree from what everyone else wants. So, listen to one of his critics. He says, many supporters of the traditional tree suspect that something peculiar is happening with the microRNAs probably large losses in the, mam in the mammalian lineage. Quote, he's talking about the entire genome that has to be wrong, says Robert Asher, a mammalian paleontologist at the University of Cambridge. Quote, I don't give it any serious consideration, says Mark Springer, a molecular phylogeneticist at the University of California, who last year published the most comprehensive genomic data set so far in support of the traditional mammalian tree. Quote, there have to be other explanations, he says. So, this is me talking. Uh, so there you have it. Um, when contradictory data is found, uh, evolutionists just assume it's some peculiar anomaly, and they just sort of discard it. I mean, we see that right here. Um, that's what happens to contradictory data. It's just kind of pushed aside, and they probably they'll say, "Oh, we'll figure it out someday." Like, what's the deal with microRNAs? So, I mean, <laughs> how do you falsify phylogenetics if something like that can come along? You know, these microRNAs, and they significantly contradict all this other data that arranges uh, lineages into these trees, and it's not just microRNAs, there's, uh, there's many other genes that, that um, cause discordance. So back to the article. Peterson and his team are now going back to mammalian genomes to investigate why DNA and microRNAs give such different evolutionary trajectories. What we know at this stage is that we do have a very serious, we have a very serious incongruence, says David Pisani, a phylogeneticist at the National University of Ireland, who is collaborating on the project. Quote, it looks like either the mammal microRNAs evolved in a totally different way, or the traditional topology is wrong. We don't know yet. Uh, this is an article from 2006 by Chen Kei et al. It's titled, 
deep conservation of microRNA target relationships, microRNAs are a class of small non-coding RNAs that post-transcriptionally regulate a large fraction of genes in animal genomes. We have previously published computational microRNA target predictions in five vertebrates, six flies, and three nematodes. Our data indicate that although many microRNA genes and untranslated region motifs are well conserved, microRNA target relationships have diverged more rapidly and we explicitly assign each gained or lost microRNA target relationship to one of the three claves. However, we also identify a small but significant number of deeply conserved microRNA targets that show that these are enriched for essential processes related to development. We find hundreds of such motifs specific to each clade, dozens specific to each pair of clades, and 10 shared by vertebrates, flies, and nematodes. These findings suggest that post-transcriptional control has undergone extensive rewiring during metazoan evolution, and that many deeply conserved microRNA target relationships may be vital subunits of metazoan gene regulatory networks. Uh, so basically what that article said is um, when they mapped out these microRNAs across uh, vertebrates, flies, and nematodes, uh, they found that some of the microRNAs were shared across all of those groups. Uh, some were specific to uh, a single group and some were specific to only two of the groups. And so you have some that are shared and some that it just appear in a single group. And what the authors are saying is that um, somewhere in evolution, all these microRNAs had to be uh, switched up and rewired for specific uh, groups of uh, animals. All right, this, this article is titled, The Identification of MicroRNAs in Calcis Sponges, Independent Evolution of MicroRNAs in Basal Metazoans by J.M. Robinson et al., 2013. We suggest that microRNAs evolved multiple times, independently, not only among eukaryotes, but even within animals. Independently evolved microRNAs representing molecular exaptations of RNA machinery into pre-existing gene regulatory networks. So basically in that article, the researchers have concluded that microRNAs must have evolved, um, you know, not only independently in eukaryotes, but also independently within different, um, different animals. Uh, this is an interesting article. It's titled, Diversity of MicroRNAs in Human and Chim Chimpanzee Brain. We used massively parallel sequencing to compare the microRNA content of human and chimpanzee brains, and we identified 447 new microRNA genes. Many of the new microRNAs are not conserved beyond primates, indicating their recent origin, and some microRNAs seem species-specific, whereas others are expanded in one species through duplication events. These data suggest that evolution of microRNAs is an ongoing process, and that along with ancient, highly conserved microRNAs, there are a number of emerging microRNAs. And that's by Eugene Beresikov from 2006. Do any evolutionists want to make a prediction of the arrival of the next microRNA? Yeah, when do you think we're going to see uh, new information like that? Here's an article from 2013. Uh, it's titled, An Epigenetic feedback regulatory loop involving microRNA-195 
and MBD1 governs neural stem cell differentiation. Epigenetic mechanisms, including DNA methylation, histone modification, and microRNAs, play pivotal roles in stem cell biology. Here we show that one of these microRNAs, uh, microRNA195 and MBD1, form a negative feedback loop, while MBD1 directly represses the expression of microRNA195 in ANSCs. High levels of microRNA195, in turn, repress the expression of MBD1. Both gain of function and loss of function investigations show the alterations of the MBD1 microRNA195 feedback loop tip the balance between ANSC proliferation and differentiation. So basically what they're saying is that if you alter the function of either the methyl binding protein or the microRNA, it's going to screw up the development of neural stem cell production. Uh, neural stem cells, they generate an organism's nerv nervous system. That sounds pretty important to me. I mean, does that sound like something that can be blindly tampered with by uh, <laughs> random Darwinian mutations? And yet, there's individual microRNA uh, unique assemblies across different and closely related species. This is an article from October 2012, and it's titled, Do MicroRNAs Have a Deep Evolutionary History? The recent discovery of microRNAs in unicellular eukaryotes, including microRNAs known previously only from animals or plants, implies that microRNAs have a deep evolutionary history among eukaryotes. This contrasts with the prevailing view that microRNAs evolved convergently in animals and plants. We reevaluate the evidence and find that none of the 73 plant and animal microRNAs described from protists meet the required criteria for microRNA annotation. And by implication, animals and plants did not acquire any of their respective microRNA genes from the crown ancestor of eukaryotes. At present, only five groups of eukaryotes are known to possess microRNA, indicating that microRNAs have evolved independently within eukaryotes through exaptation of their shared inherited RNA machinery. This is exactly the sort of thing evolutionists were predicting that we should find if intelligent design were true. You know, species unique genes that each play a fundamental role in organism development, you know, appearing suddenly in certain life forms and that don't align with a lot of other genomic data. But of course, when you do find something like that, uh, it's just sort of discarded or dismissed or ignored. And <laughs> eventually it's just absorbed into the evolutionary paradigm as no, something that happened long ago and far away.